Hey, you. Yeah, you. Love the show and want more content? Want to be part of some of our hilarious adventures? Ever wish you could be part of the squad and team up with us in our fight to save the galaxy? Well, now you can. Head over to MultiplayerSquad.com and check out some of the awesome benefits we offer to our official squad mates. We offer a ton of extra ways you can interact with us and the show. We certainly aren't above bribery to earn your support, but we think you'll love all the extras that come with supporting this independent podcast. Thank you for listening and supporting the show. Now on to what's sure to be our greatest episode ever. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Multiplayer Gaming Podcast. Here for the next hour or so, we will be engaging in some family-friendly discourse about gaming. And every other Monday, we have a deep dive episode like this one, where we break down one game in detail. And today, that game is It Takes Two. I am your host, Paul. And just like the biggest split-screen co-op game of the year, I can't do this by myself. It really does take two. I'm joined by my co-host, Josh. Uh, hey, everybody. Sorry, I, I'm still <laughs> shook. I just had to chase my cats out of the, the room. I, we were, I, we, I was broken into mm-hmm. and, and vandalized. Yes, yeah, so you had to chase your cats and pull them from underneath your couch. I really enjoyed watching this go down right as we were about to start recording. You still a little out of breath chasing them? Dude, they're quick, man. (laughs) Very nice. All right. Well, before we jump into It Takes Two, we do have a little bit of housekeeping to quickly go over. We do want to give a shout out to our latest Patreon supporter, Tyler Folis. T. Foles. T. Foles. Now, Tyler posted a pretty amazing clip from Rainbow Six Siege, where he aced the other team in overtime. One v five. It was really good. I loved the uh, the commentary from his friends on that one, which was <laughs> exactly what any commentary from friends should be when somebody is just popping off like that. So it was great. But that's what I love, man. Is you know, f- welcome T Falls, but also I-, I love this community, man. I love that people are sharing like video game highlights and clips and just those moments that we all as gamers just love to share with each other. Oh, it's so much fun, and I will always love sharing my highlight from Overwatch when my Torbjorn is dead, and I pop my ultimate while my turret just kills like five people while I am running out of spawn, and I always love sharing the goofy highlights like that, but yes, welcome t Foles. great having you around. The community keeps growing, which is great, so we get more and more people here in Discord, And Josh, we've got a big announcement that we've been teasing for a little while, but why don't you take the reins on this one? Oh, man. I'm excited about this one. Okay. So what we are going to do, we love our community. Honestly, Like we've had so much support for the podcast, and we're just continuing to grow like crazy. And I I mean, it's one of those things. Our Discord server is an incredible group of people. It's just gamers of all ages. Uh, coming together, just having fun. We play games together. People sharing highlight clips. We're sharing, you know, uh, uh, we got a guy that goes hiking all the time that's sharing photo, like these amazing photos and stuff. So what we want to do is we are going to open our Discord server to the listeners. I feel like this is where you should insert like trumpets, Paul. (laughs) You get a Discord. You get a Discord. Everybody gets a Discord. Oh, man. So, yes, we are opening up our Discord to you, the listener who is listening right now. And you might be saying, wait a minute, I don't have to pay for this. No, you do not. Um, We are going to continue to have some pretty amazing rewards for the people that are supporting the show over on Patreon at MultiplayerSquad.com. But we love our listeners. We love this community. And we want you guys to and gals to have a way to participate and hang out with other gamers. So how do you join the Discord server? Well, you can check. it. Will, there will be a link in the description of the podcast, um, in the description of the episode. So you can click there. You can also go to our website, multiplayerpodcast.com. There will be a Discord icon there. If you click that, that is an open invite link that you can use. You can send it to your friends. If you have friends that you want to be part of this amazing community, you can do that too. Now, rest assured, 
we are keeping it family friendly. This is going to be a great place to hang out. You know me, I love trolling people. Friendly trolling is great. But one of the things that we love about this community is like, honestly, they're, they're, it's just filled with great people and we are keeping it that way. So we will make sure that we are monitoring this, that we are keeping things you know, awesome like they have been, but we would love for more of you guys and gals to come join us. So that's why we're opening it up. Yeah, we're very excited to have more and more people come and join the community and you will have access to a looking for group channel. So if you're looking for a couple of friends to play a game with, great place to just pop in, try to find someone who also loves the show like you do, and you'll be able to make suggestions for future episodes whether it's a deep dive that you want us to get into, or if you have a certain idea for a draft on a bonus round episode, whatever it might be. So please come check us out on Discord. And like Josh said, feel free to invite your friends as well. So bring them with you. You get unlimited plus ones. So you don't have to come by yourself to the party. You can bring your entourage with you. Yes. (laughs) All right. I think it's about that time, guys. Let's get into it. Takes two. All right, let's start off by reading Steam's description of the game. Embark on the craziest journey of your life, and it takes two. Invite a friend to join for free with a friend pass and work together across a huge variety of gleefully disruptive gameplay challenges. Now, Josh, would you say that this was the craziest journey of your life? Because I think it might be. (laughs) (laughs) There's many moments during this game where I made the reference that maybe hallucinogenic substances were involved in parts of this game making process, I guess. Not from us, but when you're playing the game, there's there's a lot of parts where you were like, dude, what? Like, what is happening? Where is this coming from? I think that that's apt. It might be the craziest journey ever. It really might be. Now, I was kind of debating whether we should jump into the story or the gameplay first, but I think it has to be the story. And I think after we kind of go over a little bit of the story, we'll jump into the gameplay, which is really what matters most. Like, this game is a little bit different than the previous games that we've gotten from this developer. You know, this is the same director who did Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, and A Way Out. Those games were much more story-oriented. This game has a story, and that's important and integral to the experience, but the game is much more about the gameplay. So I, 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 don't, I don't think we'll spend too much time on the story, uh, but I did think that we could start there. So, Josh, how would you describe the story of It Takes Two? I want to, before we get into the story real quick, I want to I wanna kind of l- emphasize something that you said. If you buy this game, your friend gets to play for free. And that is yeah. super rare, man. Like one of the things that I love about this developer is if you buy one of their games, you get a free friend pass that lets your friend play with you without having to buy the game themselves. So y- y- you buy it, you get somebody to give it to to play with, which is awesome, man. So the only the person that actually bought the game can host it. So you do have to invite your friend and they have to join your game. But they just download like the friend pass and it's great. I wish way more games did this. Kudos to these guys for for approaching it like that. I, I think it's a phenomenal thing. And I really wanted to just emphasize that because if somebody's on the fence about it, you don't have to have two copies of this game to be able to play, which is phenomenal. Oh boy. Yeah, it really is. So if you played a way out, it works exactly the same way. So if you and a buddy want to split the cost, you can do that. Or if you want to pick it up, play through it multiple times with different buddies, you can do that as well. So the game, at least since it is so co-op focused, where this game you can't even play as a single player, it has to be played by two humans. There is no AI option for a second player. And so since the game requires two people, they let you bring your friend for free, kind of like joining our Discord. Ooh, so I think it works for I everybody. see what you did. Kudos, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> We're just going to keep bringing up the Discord every four minutes hey, in this podcast. It's great. You know, I mean, it's free at this point. What's wrong? You can't yeah. go wrong with free. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, the story, I, um, I mean, do you are we digging into the story? Do you want my overall thoughts on the story yeah. on this? No, like, not enough thoughts yet. Like the elevator pitch. What's the elevator pitch for It Takes Two? Two parents. You've got 30 seconds or less. Oh, okay. Do you want to give me some elevator music? 
All right, two parents are fighting and no longer in love and are getting a divorce. They tell their child in the worst way possible that two parents could <laughs> unveil their divorce to their kid, who then mm-hmm. casts a magic spell on them, causing them to become these creepy little dolls that must then try to figure out how to reconcile with each other at the behest of possibly the most annoying character to ever be found in a video game. <laughs> Dr. Hakeem, the Book of Love. Dr. Hakeem. <laughs> How was that? Oh, and we will be getting into Dr. Hakeem. Don't you worry. I'm sure Josh and I will try on the accent oh, probably happening. a couple I've times. I've been practicing, Paul. <laughs> we, did, we did do a lot of Dr. Hakeem as we went through this game together. All right. So, yeah, I think you did a pretty good job explaining the story. My biggest thing is what's so bad in their relationship that they're getting divorced? Like, the only thing we hear is that May, the wife, works a lot, and she's kind of gone a lot while providing for the family, and then Cody, the husband, doesn't really appreciate her working, and that's all that they really (laughs) go into. This doesn't seem like this unfixable marriage that's going to require magic and spells and the craziest journey of a lifetime, so I, I did think that was a little bit goofy, but... I guess they've just kind of fallen out of love, I guess, is what you would say. Yeah, they don't really... I mean, let's be honest. The story in this game is not uh, very fleshed out. It's not very in-depth. I I mean, everything focuses around the fact that they're getting divorced and that their kid has wished that they wouldn't get divorced. And so that wish is what turns them into these little animated characters and... You know, like I said, the book kind of directs things so that Dr. Hakeem acts like a director and kind of takes things over from there while the kid just stares at her (laughs) what appear to be dead parents. (laughs) Like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to get into spoiler territory here, but I don't think that is. This case, the story gets creepy inadvertently every now and then. And it's just, it gets a little weird, man. It definitely dives into a lot of weirdness. So we learn that Cody and May are getting divorced. You mentioned that they didn't really tell their daughter in maybe not the most appropriate way. <laughs> but how did they break this news to their daughter, Rose? And, and how old is she supposed to be? Maybe like eight? Eight? So, right so around she's there? She's still playing with little toys, you know? So yeah. I would say probably in that seven, eight range. Um, yeah, they just sit her down at the table and they say, hey, um, we, we're getting divorced. Yeah, you know, you're not going to have two (laughs) parents anymore that live together. (laughs) Sorry. We're getting divorced. And she says, okay, can I go to my room? Yeah. And that's the end. That's the whole conversation. There is no, now, Rose, we love you very much. This is not your fault. Like, there is no attempt to care for her well-being at all. It is just the biggest bomb you can ever receive at eight years old. She's clearly not really processing this well because she disappears to her room and has made these makeshift creepy dolls to be her mom and her dad. And they're in, she's pretending that they're in therapy and fixing their marriage and learning to love each other. This child just needs some help at this point, And Cody and May are not doing her any favors. No, not at all. And that's how you become these little doll things. It's like your kid made them and then she cries on them and imbues them with her magical tears. <laughs> you know, where did she get magical tears from anyway? You know, is she a uh, superhero like in disguise? That's Cody and May's running theory is that her tears brought about the spell, but then you kind of learn not really, but we're never really told what the real magical source is. Ultimately, it doesn't Hakeem. really matter. I think it's yeah, Dr. Hakeem is more, I think, more the. I think that's the catalyst. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's talk about Dr. Hakeem. He is literally a book of love who is. <laughs> As Spanish as you could possibly be, <laughs> to the point that uh, I, I wondered if it was a little over the top. Oh, definitely. Definitely <laughs> over the top. You know me, Paul. And if I say something's over the top, like, Dr. Hakeem's character is so over the top, it's ridiculous. Uh-huh. It's... Collaboration! The, it's, yes, he has... I dance so good! <laughs> right, left, right, left! <laughs> and this guy... <laughs> And this guy interrupts mustache. you. Mustache. Mustache, yes. And, and the giant eyebrows. And he just constantly interrupts you and talks to you about how your relationship has turned into a relationship. 
something else. <laughs> yeah. So, Dr. Hakeem, what would you think about him? He, I don't know where they came up with this guy. Honestly, he's the most distracting part of the game itself. Like, hallucinogenic mm-hmm. stages aside, right? Like, Dr. Hakeem is, like, this weird, like, cheese grater moment where you just feel like he's, <laughs> ch- like, like grating your brain with something. And it's mm-hmm. just turning it into this, like, I don't know, it's like fingers on a chalkboard to me. But you get subjected to him so much that, like, there's parts where you just can't help but laugh at that point. So it's just the character is over the top. I found him very annoying. I don't think that he adds anything to this story whatsoever. I get that they needed somebody besides the creepy kid to, to, you know, move things along with, with the husband and the wife. But where they came up with this character, why they thought this was a good idea, I have no idea. There's so many cringy moments from Dr. Hakeem when he starts dancing, you know, uh-huh. and he's like, look at my heaps. They're moving right and left and right and left. <laughs> Camera zoom into his supposed butt, yeah, which where, is just where the back cover of the would book. Be, and yes. you can tell that that's supposed to be like a sexy moment, you know, yes. but then you're like, dude, you're a book. Like, you don't have, you don't have butt cheeks, man. Like... Oh man. So so Dr. Hakeem basically pops up as like the structure in between chapters. So basically your characters are going to be getting a divorce and so you get thrown into this magical world. Your characters Cody and May have to work together in collaboration, collaboration. which is a word you will hear 700 times from Dr. <laughs> Hakeem. And basically he will just pop up and literally seatbelt you into therapy. In these cutscenes, where you learn how you need to reignite your passion or, you know, whatever it might be. And so then basically you get into a new chapter, which is a new location. You have new mechanics and the whole game is basically built around you and your spouse working together to get through the game. And you can definitely see it a mile away that the whole point, what Dr. Hakeem is trying to get you to do is to reconcile and be able to save the marriage and not have to get divorced. Yeah. And it's weird because it seems like in certain chapters, you know, like you mentioned, he talks about collaboration, right? A lot. And then it's (laughs) like, okay, so we're going to have to collaborate. But then there's cooperation. And then so you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. In this chapter, do we have to cooperate? And then, you know, there's the passion chapter, which don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. And wasn't there another one before that? But you would think like it would focus on different things, but then there's really not any like separation there between collaboration, cooperation. They're all just synonyms. Yeah, you know, as yeah. far as like what your characters are supposed to be doing. Yeah. And apparently all you need to do to fix a marriage is just solve a couple puzzles together, Josh, Easy, and, man. and and then all will be fine. Yeah, right. I also all I right. also like the whole like idea of forced therapy being you yes. know where Doctor Hakeem yes. straps you guys down and you can't move and it's like you know <laughs> yeah. you're being forced into therapy together like that's going to be effective somehow. Yeah, that's the first step in getting help. Right, is <laughs> strapping someone down. And forcing it upon them. All right. So in the game, you get to choose whether you're going to play as Cody or as May. And they do let you switch it in between sessions. However, we kept it consistent. So Josh and I went through this entire game here in the last week and a half or so. And what did you think about the characters, Josh? Who did you identify with and and play as? I went with Cody because he's the dad. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it just... I don't think we actually even talked about it. It was just, I went with Cody and you went with May and we did not ever switch. I think at that point we had like laid claim to our characters. Sure. But they, there are, there would be the potential for replayability because there's so many things where you get an item or an ability where the other person gets something vastly different. So you could play through the game as the other character to experience slightly different gameplay in that regard. Um, But I I mean, honestly, there was no rhyme or reason to the character choice to me. It was just, that's kind of how it went. Like it's a split screen game. Even if you're playing online with people, 
Um, and Cody was on the right hand side and I had the right split screen. So it seemed to just kind of make sense in that regard, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So th- this will be a great transition into the gameplay, but ironically, even though we did not know anything about Cody or may you selected Cody who turns out to be a little bit more of the fun focused dad. Who's a little more laid back and not necessarily proactive and structure and things like that. Whereas I'm going to take that as a compliment, Paul, even though I (laughs) I, I get what you're saying. (laughs) There's, there's probably some pros and some cons to both. Uh, but I would say that you are definitely more of a Cody than a may. Yeah. May is an engineer. She's very calculated. She's very, uh, like work oriented, um, just very, task like, focused. very hyper focused, like task focused and stuff like that. Exactly. Whereas Cody is just more of like the, Hey, let's just go with the flow. Why is that a big deal? I don't understand. You know, Oh, wait, you're upset about something like why, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess that does fit oddly enough. Yeah. It did fit our personalities, which was also really ironic because when we went through the game a way out, which functions almost the same as far as general mechanics of It Takes Two. In that game, I played as Vince and you played as Leo, who were very similar to our personalities. So it was really funny how in both of these games, we just so happened to pick, I think, the right avatar that fit easiest for both of us. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So when the game starts, you get, you know, a couple of these initial cutscenes, and then uh, you don't play or control any characters until after you are in the bodies of the dolls. And as Josh mentioned, the entire game, except for maybe two or three minutes at the very end, but the entire game is always split screen. So you are watching your character, but you can always glance over and see what your partner is doing as well. And basically, you are given vastly different mechanics in each chapter but then also Cody and May will have completely different mechanics within each chapter, but your mechanics are always very complementary in order to complete puzzles or to get through a maze, if you will. And so let's just talk like as an example, because we don't want to spoil too much of this game, but let's just start with the very first level where you start off with the hammer and nails. Do you want to talk a little bit about just explaining how the gameplay works and how Cody and May have different abilities. Yeah, so obviously this is a two-player co-op game, so it is very co-op, fo- you know, favored as far as the gameplay goes. You are relying on your teammate to get through these stages, and there's a lot of different stages that I'm sure we can get into in a little bit. Um, but the first level, you know, Cody gets, you know, handed some nails by Dr. Hakeem. Again, he's kind of the director of all this. And then May gets, uh, like a hammer, just the head of a hammer. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you've got to use these. So what we quickly figured out is that as May with the hammer head, you can use that to grab on to things that are sticking out of the wall and swing around those and then leap off of those. Whereas Cody can shoot the nails like a gun and embed them into certain, you know, parts of the level surfaces. Right, exactly. And I mean, ultimately, the gameplay in this game is 100% get from point A in a level to point B in a level. Now, there's Mm -hmm. a lot more that goes into that. But you are making your way through a level from start to finish, so to speak. Now, there's there's plots and there's different crazy things going on and all that. But that's the gameplay at its core. And so in this case, you have to work together because a lot of times the characters have to take different routes. So because you had the hammerhead, you could grab onto something, swing around, and then leap up to somewhere high where I could not get to. So then you would have to maybe go flip a switch or something like that, and then that would drop a bridge down that I could then cross. But then on the flip side, you know, maybe you couldn't get somewhere, and I would have to shoot a nail, which would then give you something to grab onto with your hammerhead so that I could create a path for you. Um, and so the co-op in this game works an awful lot like that. You are dependent upon the person that you're playing with to help you get through the level. But what the game does really well throughout the game is just like that. Whereas you got the hammerhead and I got the nail shooter in subsequent levels, I'll get something that gives me a specific ability and you'll get something completely different and you have to kind of figure out how to use those together. Yeah, and what I thought was really neat in the first level with the hammer and the nails is that it starts off very simplistic. Okay, I can't jump across this ledge, so you're just going to shoot a nail in the middle. I'm going to swing on your nail and then jump over. 
Well, then you start getting more complicated machinery where now I have to get across like a cork board, but there's all these moving pieces. And so if I jump onto this ledge, my ledge is moving left to right. But if you shoot a nail into it, then it pins it to the board. And so you have to like time things correctly. And so in every chapter, you basically get a short tutorial of how the mechanics work. It gets more complicated. The puzzles get a little bit harder, usually over the course of a chapter. And I actually thought that the opening chapter felt a lot like playing Portal, where it was, well, I can't reach the surface, but you're going to use your ability, and there it's going to interact with my character, and here's how we're going to work together to get me up there, and now I can get you over here by doing something else. And I thought that the first level was maybe the best chapter, I, honestly. honestly, I'm with I you 100 it might be. Yeah, there was yeah. a couple levels. Some levels I was not a real big fan of. Um, other levels I thought were really well done. And what's interesting is the first level in this game, I felt like was one of the best. Now, we have to back it up for just a second, Paul, because when Dr. Hakeem gives you these items and he's like, here's, you know, hey, you got to save these tools, right? Here's uh-huh. a hammerhead for you, May. Here's these nails that you can shoot you know, Cody, what is the very first thing okay. we did? <laughs> okay, fair enough. And having played a way out, we knew you're going to be able to do this. Of course, I immediately try to hit you with the hammer <laughs> and you immediately try to shoot me with the nail gun. Of course. <laughs> and, of course, that's how we're going to play. And and what I love about this game is they completely go, we know you people are going to try to do that. So I, yeah. you hit me with the hammer and my guy gets like flattened flattened well no he gets like drove down into the wood like halfway so like Uh he legit like hammered my legs down into the wood and i'm stuck and can't move now and then or or if you would shoot me with a nail i'd have to mash the e button to pull the nail out of my body right so i could then move which was great because i love the fact that the nail just straight up impaled you and then you have this (laughs) nail just sticking out of you until you decide to pull it out um yeah, yeah so the game a hundred percent embraces the the goofiness of co-op and the fact that you're gonna troll your teammates, you're gonna try these goofy things. There's, you know, a part, this isn't a spoiler, but there's a part where it's like, you know, you can turn a blender on. And of course, the very first thing I did was jump in a blender. And what happens? Yeah. My guy dies, you know, that kind of <laughs> stuff. So I love the fact that there's those little touches in the game where it's not just race from point A to point B. There are a lot of things to kind of check out along the way. Uh, not necessarily, you know, you and I's cup of tea necessarily, but there is a good bit of exploration to be done in this game. Um, the levels are fairly linear, but there's those neat little tidbits. You can find these mini games to play, you know, that kind of stuff, which is great. But I'm with you. I thought the first level on this game was really, really good. Yeah, and you make some really good points there. It, the game is not designed for you to beat every puzzle as quick as you can and move on. It is very atmospheric. There are lots of Easter eggs throughout the game. There are even references to their previous games, like you see Vincent and Leo from A Way Out as little statues in the garage. And so there's things like that. But they also pepper in random mini games in every single chapter. So maybe overall, you're using your hammer and nails to get from this side to the other. But all of a sudden, now we get to play... uh, What's the, the... Pop Weasel. Whack a mole. There you go. Whack a Cody, I think, is what they named it. (laughs) So there's like a whole mini game where I'm holding my hammer and you're popping out from these holes and I have to try to turn and smack you. And then at the end, it counts and adds up, you know, how many times did I hit you? How many times did you escape? And it tells you who wins. And so there's a lot of little things like that to experience along the way. The game is very, very casual. You can play this with someone who's not a regular gamer. It is not terribly difficult. If you die, you just have to mash a button and then you respawn. And as long as you don't both die at the same time, you have unlimited lives. And you just keep trying and you figure out how the levels work and you beat the puzzle and you move on. So it's definitely not a very challenging game. That's my first criticism. You mentioned Portal and it's very hard at certain parts of this game to not compare it to Portal. You know, because, or Portal 2, I should say, because of the cooperation aspect and and needing to rely on your teammate. 
And Portal 2, I love the fact that there was some very difficult, like, brain-bending challenges there. And this game, it's not, it's not hard. It's, yeah, it's really no. not hard. I mean, we played this entire game, and I think there was one or two points where for about five seconds, maybe, we kind of went like, hey, what are we supposed to do right here? Oh, okay, if I do yeah. this, then you do that. And, then, and it's like, this is not a brain buster, stump you, try to figure out these puzzles type of game at all. It's, it is, like you said, very casual. Yeah, it's definitely designed to be more popcorn entertainment than any kind of hardcore gaming. That's for sure. All right, so in the first level, you're working your way through this garage, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this game has boss fights. Yes. And now, I did not know this going in, because I tried to intentionally avoid every possible trailer because of how much I loved Brothers and A Way Out. I couldn't wait to play It Takes Two, and all of a sudden, we're fighting this really old, dusty vacuum. Yes, that is also part of the contention between the husband and wife. So these levels actually serve a little bit to kind of further why they don't like each other. And I guess the whole point was, is that I was supposed to, as the husband, fix the vacuum at some point, and I never did. And then you were supposed to clean under the bed or something, but because you didn't, the vacuum sucked up all of the stuff that it shouldn't have sucked up or something like that. And so, you know, the we're bickering, right? Our characters are bickering back and forth while this vacuum's getting really ticked off at us and about to just like crush us into oblivion. Um, Oddly enough, we talk about the first level being great, but I thought the boss fight against the vacuum (laughs) was one of the best boss fights in the whole game too, man. It was one of the best boss fights because, uh, okay, look, if you don't want any spoilers at all, go ahead and skip 60 seconds. We're going to say this maybe just once or twice in this pod, but the way that you defeat the vacuum is that you and I each have a different vacuum hose that are turned on with power, and we have to run over and suck his eyes (laughs) out of the vacuum. (laughs) That's and as soon variant. as you start doing this, like we're slowly pulling his face closer and sticking him, and his eyeballs start stretching and getting pulled into the vacuum. And I literally yelled, I don't like this, John. <laughs> it was, I don't like things going into eyes. And that's how you defeat the vacuum. I was like, okay, this game is this game's a bit of a trip. Yeah. It is a little bit like Alice in Wonderland. I remember cackling when I realized what was about to happen. And I was just yeah. like, oh my goodness, are you serious? And I could just hear you going like, dude, no, no, this is no. not. And then it, it it straight up just does. <laughs> dude, the, the brave little toaster was bad enough with the vacuum sucking up its own cord. This was like, <laughs> we're going to suck the eyeballs out of this vacuum. But, I, I was a little traumatized, and that wasn't even the most traumatizing moment. No. That's the thing about this game. This game is like marketed as being super family friendly, and for the most part, it is. But there are some weird, disturbing elements. The game oddly does throw in a lot of PG language. It's not like really profane, but it's just like almost forced. Like there's conversations when you normally wouldn't hear any language. And it, it just felt a little out of place. I just thought it was odd. It was odd because it only took place in like 60 seconds out of the whole game. But in like, the, it's like they just at some point went, you know what we need? We need a few cuss words, <laughs> you know, that no, are, just that are timid, nowhere. you know, nothing too bad. But like, we just, we have to have this character say these twice and then we're good. It was like they had to meet a quota or something. Like yeah. they didn't want to be rated G. Because maybe that sounds like, oh, this is like strictly for kids. So they went, if we throw in these two cuss words in this game's rated PG, like, I I don't know. It did seem out of place. Yeah, it's not like it was offensive or anything. Like, we play mature games all the time. This one, it just seemed a little odd. Yeah. So anyway, this game does have the puzzles. It's got the mini games. It's got the boss fights. And so... That, that That's kind of like walking you through sort of the first level. So we're going to stay, for the most part, spoiler-free from here, other than just talking about some general mechanics. But were there any other particular chapters or mechanics that stuck out that were memorable? There, there were, man. And this game does a great job of mixing up every level. Uh, okay, like, that's, that's honestly probably what it does better than anything else, is keeping... Every level feels like it's almost a different game. 
And mm-hmm. so what we mean by that is, you know, the first level, you get the hammer, you get the nails, you're shooting them back and forth, you're impaling your part. I mean, you're just helping your partner get across the level, you know, that kind of stuff. But then another level, maybe you are, you know, in an airplane type thing and you're flying around that level and, you know, maybe another level you're controlling a boat. And so you have to learn the mechanics of like paddling the boat, that kind of stuff. To me, one of the levels plays like a top down dungeon crawler. Yeah. That's the first thing I was going to bring up. Yes. And I don't want to give too many spoilers, but one level plays exactly like that to where your character had certain abilities and my character had certain very vastly different abilities. And it almost felt like we were playing Diablo for a little bit, you know, and I thought that was super cool. Like that one really stood out in my mind is like when this started to happen, I went, okay, like, yeah, this is my (laughs) kind of level right here. Well, because out of nowhere, your character puts on some clothing that made it clear what they were going to be able to do. Yes. And then my character had something similar, and then all of a sudden it popped up the controls. And you can immediately, if you're a long-term gamer, it's like button A, short attack, button B, long attack. And then after you fight a little bit, you get an ultimate. And so you and I were kind of like... Oh, this is great. This is one of those it isometric. Really was. That one co-op stood out games. to me. There was another yeah. moment that uh the game switched very briefly to a 2D fighter uh <laughs> style like Street Fighter. For, yeah, like Street Fighter. Yeah. For just yeah, a yeah. little brief snippet. Again, no spoilers or anything like that, but we can't really talk about this game without talking about those sorts of things. So I remember being very tickled at the fact that it was switching to a 2D fighter style. And it does a very good job of really mixing up those things. Sometimes it feels like a shooter almost, which is kind of interesting. You Mm -hmm. know, other times it's a very strong like platformer. I mean, this game touches on almost every genre you can imagine with the exception of like a turn-based role-playing game or something. Yeah. And I think that maybe sometimes plays to the game's strengths that there are so many different types of levels, but at the same time, it can almost be a little bit of a detriment because they kind of burn through these mechanics very quickly. A a lot of times I felt like as soon as I learned the mechanics and I realized, oh, you could get so creative in how you use these, and then the chapter would end, and then all of a sudden you're handed a new set, and if you were really loving the old one, if the new ones didn't work as well, it was always a little bit of a bummer. Like, no shade thrown at the game, but running around with a a water gun and what did you have in that level I was that was when I could grow I could turn into like plants like a, or something right yeah or you almost had like, like a like a grapple hook oh sort of. that's right yeah yeah like when you compare that for example to a different chapter where you had the ability to use a clock to turn back time and I could turn myself into a clone and then run far away and then press a button and teleport back. Like those elements were so much neater than the other ones that sometimes it was a bummer when a chapter ended and you just wanted to go back to where you were. Or on that same vein though, part of it is, is like, you know, you're figuring out how to use these abilities and it takes a little bit because they're just thrown at you. Right. And it's like, Hey, you can do this and you know, you can do that. And you go, you both go, okay, cool. And then just as you start to get rolling on that, it's, it's, it never like ramps up in difficulty either. So you want like the puzzle challenge to like go up a step to where you actually do have to start thinking about these things. And then either the level's over and it just never got to that next, that next tier of like, Oh, we really have to figure out how to cooperate or you know what I mean? Like it just, I would, there's times where I wish like they had taken it to the next level. Like, okay, we got the basics down now ramp it up a little bit, make it a little bit harder so that we have to actually communicate. Like that's one of my big things. And I, I kind of said it is it's almost a little too casual, mm-hmm. you know, in that regard where I, I feel like they really missed the mark on being able to ramp up some of these ideas and they just, they just didn't, you know, and that, that was a little disappointing to me. Yeah. I'm sure it's a business decision that they want to appeal to the widest audience, but man, if you could design this as like a hardcore puzzler, yes, this would totally be up our alley. This would be a 100 out of 100 game that we would love playing co-op. As it is, it's a great game. Like I, I think it's highly enjoyable. I think the reason why it's so accessible is I feel like this is the epitome of I want to play a game with my spouse or my boyfriend or girlfriend. What game should we try out? And this is from now on 
this is going to be the default answer. It's that everyone a great says. entry point. It really is. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, my wife would enjoy playing this game and she does not like these kind of like fast paced games. She's actually in there right now playing Pokemon Snap. So, you know, <laughs> you it's, it's just one of those like I, I think she would enjoy this game because of the entry point into the type of game that it is. It is not hardcore in any way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Should we talk about Cutie the Elephant, or are we oh. just going to let that one sit? <laughs> we, are we going <laughs> to... I mean, well, we have to. What are we going to do? Right? We have to? We have to. Okay. I mean, we'll just, we'll just preface it. Like, this will be the last spoiler that it, we this talk is a, about. This is a... It, it, it's kind of a big... It's not a big spoiler to the, to the story or any of that stuff, but there's a moment in this game that just cannot... We can't talk about the game and not talk about this moment. <laughs> Well, this game, this this mechanic is oftentimes the first thing anyone will say about it takes two. So, like, your characters think that in order to break this spell, they have to make their daughter cry and have her tears fall on you, and that'll reverse the spell. Well, how are we going to make her cry? Well, Cutie the Elephant is her favorite toy. So, now, in this world, all the toys, all the items in the house are all anthropomorphized they, they all story. come to Just life think toy story toy story yeah. they've got names and personality and so you go to this elephant and you're gonna murder it and this is like a conscious elephant that is nice and begging for its life while Dude, you are slowly cutest, dragging it sweetest little elephant you would imagine <laughs> i mean it is it is what you would imagine like a seven-year-old girl's elephant would talk like if she was pretending that this is like little princess elephant right yes. like it's got the sweetest little cutest just voice she loves everybody she's so glad that you're there to play with her and then our goal is to straight up just kill this elephant to make our daughter cry by throwing her off a cliff off a cliff into to her death <laughs> yes. and she doesn't want to die so she struggles oh, no. you we we ripped her ear off <laughs> and Remember her that? leg and her, her leg, leg Paul. That's because you're dragging her on the ground and there's push pins and like she grabs one and I don't even remember how it happens, but somehow it like I think she might even pin herself to the ground to not move, and then it's like no, just keep 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 uh, pulling her as hard as you can, and then like her ear comes it's, off, and oh, it's it's disturbing. It's one of the most bonkers moments in a video game that I can remember. Like I could not believe like the whole time we're going, okay, we're gonna meet this elephant, and the plan is gonna change. Like hands down, yeah. you know this is coming, and the plan does not change. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> and it's just and, like I remember you and I both going like, "What is happening?" Like, is this and it doesn't real? work. No, it doesn't it even doesn't work. work. <laughs> you just you just murder this elephant for fun. Oh man, <laughs> what what on earth? So so yes, if you hear about Cutie the elephant, I know it left an impression on on most people. All right, so th- there's so much that we could talk about. We're just gonna have to move on to our regularly scheduled segments from here on out. Although I did have one new one that I thought I would kind of spring on you here, Josh. Ooh. Um, oh, I like surprises. Yeah. I mean, this is nothing really too revolutionary, but I thought we could have just maybe a segment for just the show, or maybe we'll use it moving forward if we want. But I'm going to call it Genie's Wish. Ooh. So, Josh, a Three genie more wishes. gives you... No, I'm just Well, kidding. one you wish. <laughs> <laughs> one wish. You can change anything in this game to make it better. What Ooh. one change would you make to It Takes Two? Uh, hands down, this is a very easy one for me. Sometimes this, this is kind of hard to think about a wish, but my wish for It Takes Two, make it more difficult. Increase ramp the challenge, the ramp up the difficulty, ramp up the puzzle difficulty, ramp up the boss fight if you die. You know what I mean? There was just, there is no penalty in this game at all anywhere. Like, unless both people die at the same time, which is very hard to do. And even then, it only puts you back, like, 20 seconds. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, yeah, my genie genie, grant me the wish, make it takes to be a little bit more hardcore. <laughs> I think mine would be, instead of having, like, eight sets of mechanics and chapters, let's just cut it in half. Let's just take the best four and let's make those levels twice as long because I felt like they really just scratched the surface. Like, for example, I mentioned being able to reverse time. That was such a cool element. So, like, for example, I remember in one part, my character was really high up and there was a glass jar, like a mason jar with a lid. 
And so I pushed it off the edge. It shatters on the ground. Well, you could jump on top of the lid, reverse time. It pushes the lid while all the shards go back up. They land up. And now you are on that higher shelf. And that was like, oh, this is so cool. You could take this in a million detailed ways, but it never really went beyond that. It was kind of like, well, clearly we just got to reverse this while you stand on it, or I'm going to reverse this. You're going to run through, and it it didn't really get any more complicated than that. Right. It keeps it simple, and that kind of goes to what I was saying, is I really wish the puzzles, and even the fighting and stuff in the game, like, I I just, I, like, I get you're trying to, like, appeal to the, you know, the broadest audience possible, but maybe as lifelong gamers, it's like, this is just way too easy. Like, I've always said I like games that have a challenge and have a, a certain difficulty level. And for me, this game lacked almost any kind of difficulty level at all. And so it's a, it's sad because that's really my only major complaint with this game, you mm-hmm. know, is that it was just too easy. I felt like we were just on autopilot, like, the whole time, you know? And I think that really kind of got in my head after a little while to where it was like, I, it's a good game, but I don't, I'm not challenged at all while we're playing this. Yeah. I think that's totally fair. All right. Well, that's a little bit about what we think about. It takes two. Josh, you got some community reviews for us here. I do have some community reviews. Um, As always, we're going to read a few of these, some of the funnier ones, some of the ones that we just felt are, you know, pretty accurate to the, to the game itself too. Um, the first one, this is a recommended review and they said, amazing game that I love to play, but the boyfriend that I was playing it with broke up with me a few days after playing this game, (laughs) a game that's about fixing your relationship. 10 out of 10 game, zero out of 10 in my heart. Wait, wait, there was an edit after that. And it says edit. Why do people find this funny? I wasn't kidding. (laughs) Well, okay, look, if you're going to bear your soul to the world, I don't know that Steam Reviews is the place to do it. Yeah. But, you know, I guess the boyfriend realized they didn't have what Cody and May had, you know? Yes, they didn't you have do? a creepy kid that turned them into dolls. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so the next one is uh, not recommended. <laughs> this person has 0.1 hours oh, on, on okay. record, 0.1 <laughs> wow. And it says, if you don't have anyone to play with in this game, don't even bother. The game has no single player and no online matchmaking, so pretty much impossible to play by yourself. Now, let me ask you something, Paul. As a Uh a rational person, if you saw a game that is called It Takes Two... (laughs) Right, it's in the name. It's it's literally the name of the game. Like, why would you buy a game that is It Takes Two... And then expect that there would be a single player option to it. So yeah, this uh, is like the game Army of Two, right? right? It requires two people. So I feel like this game did a very good job with the marketing and the description. Everything is littered saying it is two player, but you get a friend pass. I'm sure there's a really active online community. I bet they have a Discord page where it'd be super easy to find someone to play with. But yeah, you absolutely cannot play single player. It's impossible. Yeah, I just love that they gave it a negative review because of that aspect. <laughs> because like, of the nature of the game. Did you even know what you were yeah. buying at that point? All right. I don't so recommend another- World of Warcraft because I don't have internet and right. I can't yeah. log in. Like That would be the equivalent, <laughs> right? Yeah. I can't get online. <laughs> All right. So this one is not recommended. Uh, and it starts off with spoilers, but we've talked about this spoiler in particular. So Okay. Uh, I was loving this game, but when you get to the bit where you murder an innocent, sweet little (laughs) elephant, I was done. I walked out of the room. I was just like, no, I'm not doing that. After my husband did it for me and I came back to play, I was no longer rooting for May and Cody. I now hate them with a passion and want them to fail. I haven't finished the game. Lock them up. (laughs) I haven't finished the game, but as I continue to play, I sit there and wonder what other evils will this game try to force me to do? (laughs) Oh, man. No, I, I totally get what they're saying. If you are a more sensitive soul... It, it It is a traumatizing part of the game, and it, especially because the game does not present as a game that's going to have those kinds of features in the beginning, that I think is why it hurts as a gut punch, because you're not expecting it at all. I'll be honest, the whole point, the the, the, the part of this game with the elephant will go down in my memory of, of, oh, it's of, a of video memory. games. It is yeah. amazing what they did, so... 
Yeah, I, I, I got to give him credit for that. Like, as crazy as it was, sometimes crazy is memorable. So, <laughs> while May is even yelling, why, why do we have to do this? I don't right. like it. And they're like, like, even they're yelling that as you're forced to do it. All right, two more. These are both. I like these because they both they're 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 actually pretty accurate for what people like about the game and what they don't like about the game. So the first one's not recommended. It says absolutely terrible game. I thought the first segment in the garage was decent, but it all went downhill from there. The game was repetitive with long drawn out segments understandably this game shouldn't require any skill but any parts that involve dying repetitively was due to the game just being annoying rather than difficult as far as the story it was wildly inconsistent and did not stay on track whatsoever the purpose of the game was to make the two main characters fall in love again to reunite with their daughter but about two percent of the dialogue and cutscenes touched on that the rest was just useless void filling speech lastly the game itself runs terrible with huge well we didn't I, I thought the game ran fine. So uh, yeah. all in all, 95% of the game is filled with useless little tasks that are both boring and annoying and don't add anything to progression or the story. Oof. All right. Not a fan. It's, yeah, not a fan of that. Uh, I mean, you know, there were parts of the story for me that were like, okay, this doesn't really make a lot of sense or this is very shallow and stuff like that. So I, I feel like that touched on aspects of the game that you could complain about. Um, but yeah, that guy obviously wasn't a fan. And then on the flip side, this person says, Hey, this is a recommended review. Best co-op game I've played so far. The variety in the game mechanics and characters will make up for the overall story, which might not be the most profound story of all time. And the stunning (laughs) art style might not be will make you feel like you're in a Pixar movie. Definitely a fun, engaging and overwhelming experience. Now I'll say this, the graphics in this game are really really good like the They're lighting out of this world they really are like it's one of those things that stood out to me big time was it legit feels like you are playing a pixar movie so if you've ever had that desire it, it i mean it's right up there man there's many many times in this game where i was just like dude this looks amazing Oh, a hundred percent. The colors were incredible. Even some of the rooms, like I remember when you go through Rose's room where there's all the play balls and there's airplanes in the air and there's these giant buildings and railroad tracks and there's just so much going on. And even the animations are great. Anytime our characters were turning a crank or pushing something in a circle, it, it all looked very true to life. So the color and the animation, it was all incredible. Yeah, the voice acting's done well, too. I mean, it's a top-notch production, honestly, uh, all around. There, it's really... There was a lot. I think there was one point in the game because you're going really fast and you're on rails or something like that. And I remember commenting, like, dude, this is what, like, the next Sonic the Hedgehog game should be. Because yeah. it, they just did such a good job of, like, indicating speed, you know, that I was just oh, like, yeah. man, this feels so good. Like the way that they're doing this, I kudos to them, man. They really did a, a really good job with that. Well, I remember they would warp your field of view. So as soon as you would start riding on those rails, it would give you a higher frame of reference. And so it felt like you were going really fast and they, they did a great job. You got to yeah. give it to them. Yeah. All right. So that's all the reviews that we have, Paul. So. Uh, as we do on every uh, game review episode, that is what the community thought. We are going to take it. We're going to play a little game where we guess what we think the overall score is uh, for this game on Steam, which uses a you know zero out of one hundred percent score. So, Paul, what is your right. guess? I think that this game has had overwhelmingly positive response. I seem to just run into everyone loving this game. I know they've already sold a million copies, so it's been very successful. I think this is somewhere in the 95 to 100% range. I'm going to go 97%. Ooh. All right. I think it's super high up there. I thought it was a very good game. I thought that there would probably be people that either didn't like, you know, how easy it was, or maybe some of the cartoony nature would slam the story. So I guessed a little bit lower at 87%. Mm. Um, I knew that it was a, you know, it was, it was a pretty, you know, well-received game, but I didn't think it was quite that high. So I, I guessed 87. The actual percentage on this, you were really close because you mentioned the correct score. You said 95 to 100, and it is 95%. Oh. 95, so overwhelmingly huh? positive in the reviews on this game. Uh, yeah, you were you were close, man. Should have gone with your your first your first <laughs> inkling there. 
it makes sense. It's kind of a hard game to criticize. Even if you don't like it, there's so much good you can still say about the game. There's something there that everyone will at least enjoy to an extent. I think it's very rare that anyone's just like, screw this game. It sucks. Yeah, well, Paul, we're gonna we're gonna give our thoughts on that in this next segment. But uh, as the winner, you get to uh, you get to introduce it, Paul. So, oh, yeah. All right, let's let's hit that music. Hey there, baby. Are you a bank loan? Because you got my interest. <laughs> oh my <goodness. laughs> Do you have a spreadsheet of these terrible jokes? <laughs> I, I I got them for days, Josh. Oh, I got man. I got plenty. All right, so this segment here is called Make Love, Marry, or Murder, where basically we rank this game. Is it something that we want to marry? We want to commit to it long term? Are we just going to make love and then leave it in the dust or murder it? So I have a feeling we might have the same answer, but I'll just go first. This is a make love game, 100%. You can beat it in about 10 to 12 hours. I think it's a lot of fun, even though it's not terribly difficult. I think it is a blast to run through, maybe with a son or a daughter or a spouse or a partner or even your podcast partner. I think it's fun. I don't know that I'll ever play it again, but I did enjoy playing it. I think there's lots to like, you know, make love. I'm not I'm not enthusiastically making love to it, but, (laughs) you know, it's like unenthusiastically making oh, love man. to it. <laughs> um, it is, I, I, I'm going to say this, it is a great game, right? Like, I can appreciate the the amount of love and effort that went into this game. The The production quality is through the roof. The graphics are incredible. The, the sound, I mean, there's nothing this game does wrong. I am not a fan of this game. I am straight up going to reveal that I am going to murder this game. Believe it or not, I really you're that one out of twenty. Legitimately, this is. I had a really hard time playing this game, man. Um, like no trolling, but it's too easy. Like I legit felt like I was doing chores, like playing this game, Mm -hmm. because there was no like no risk, no reward to me whatsoever, right? Like I can appreciate that there's a gajillion people out there that will love this game. And it's, it's meant for a lot of people. The couch co-op aspect is great. I really wish there were more games like that being developed. And so I'm not slandering the game itself, but for me, and I don't always need like constant adrenaline. Like there's plenty of slow pace, slow pace games that I really, really enjoy I just couldn't get into this game. And I think the major, major drawback for that was, is because there was no, there was no difficulty level, like at all, like honestly at all. I I mean, and and it just completely just ruined the game for me in that regard. So I hate it because I get that it's such a good production. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to murder it because I just didn't really have that much fun with it, man. Like I love that you and I got to play it together and that there were some really neat moments, but just not, not for me, man. I feel like it also falls prey a little bit to the fact that we are still playing a very fast paced adrenaline producing game like Outriders which is a little bit more difficult. It's more satisfying. It's more fast paced. I feel like if we were covering it takes two right after something like phasmophobia, it would probably feel a little more active, but it does feel like a very slower paced passive game, even though there's a lot that, that you could like. So it's also rough following up Outriders. Maybe. I mean, like I said, I don't always need adrenaline. I mean, yes, I like chaos and difficulty and that kind of stuff. But I I mean, Firewatch is a slow placed, uh, you know, slow paced game that I absolutely love. Like Subnautica is another, you know, not super intensive, fast paced kind of stuff. Like there's, there's a lot of games I like. But for me, this game felt like it was just on rails the whole time progressing 
like almost routinely, you know what I mean? Like you, mm-hmm. it, there was no, there's no part where you're like, oh man, we can't make it past this part or this part of the game is really hard. We're going to have to try four or five or six times and, 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 you know, getting that sense of progression or accomplishment to where I literally felt like this could have been a game that was on train car rails where we're just cruising along, experiencing each level with no drawbacks or repercussions. So it, it, that's the thing I kind of hinted at it in the beginning. If this game had a higher difficulty level, it would skyrocket this game up for me into like a very high upper echelon. But because of how simple and easy it was, it really just put a kibosh on that. That's fair. I, I totally understand what you're saying there. All right. So we got one unenthusiastic uh, make love <laughs> and one murder. <laughs> Oh, man. (laughs) I feel like it's been a while since we had one that we weren't crazy about. And I feel bad because it's a good game. I think it's just maybe not just our personal cup of tea. And that's the thing. Like, I want to, like, preface that by saying, like, I think think people will love this game. Like, don't take me not liking it to mean you shouldn't play it, right? Like, that's the thing is because this is just a personal preference in this regard. So if you're hearing me say, hey, I'm going to murder this game... That doesn't mean this isn't a great game that I think tons of people will love playing with friends and spouses and stuff like that. It's just, I found it way too easy. So if you're the kind of person where, hey, easy kind of sucks for you, then maybe this isn't your game. If you don't mind easy at all, and you're just more along for the ride in the co-op, it's a phenomenal game. Yeah, well said. All right, well, let's go to the leaderboard and see where this game stacks up. All right, so if you're a first-time listener to the show, we have a master leaderboard that you can see at our website, MultiplayerPodcast.com, and at the end of every Deep Dive episode, we rank it against every other game that we have done a Deep Dive episode, and basically we try to rank them in order of preference. Right now, we have a list of 1 to 40 games. Ooh, As a that's side a, note, that's Josh, a heck you, of might, a list. you might need to refresh. I, I just updated Outriders. <laughs> it wasn't on there. <laughs> so so we've got a list of 40 games <laughs> yeah yeah so now that it's updated josh you should be able to see the full 40 all right so we've got a leaderboard of 40 games and i think that when trying to rank it takes two i think we have to immediately compare it to a way out because these are the only two games that are in this genre it is one that joseph ferris however you pronounce his name he basically invented this genre so, would you put this above or below a way out? I would put it below. I would too. Yeah, I really would. The story, the gameplay in It Takes Two is great. Like, there's so many good parts to the gameplay and the creativeness of the different levels and the skills and how it rotates genres so quickly that the gameplay portion I thought was entertaining. Mm-hmm. But a way out. Even though it has slower gameplay mechanics, the story and the interactivity between the two characters is just so much better that I would play A Way Out hands down before I would play It Takes Two. I would also. Like, A Way Out has so many moments that stand out in my mind, like you and me popping wheelies on the wheelchairs in the hospital and... Uh, me playing basketball with your son, like a convicted yeah. murderer, you're letting play <laughs> basketball alone with your son. Like that game was kind of bananas in its own way, but it had so many memorable moments that I really loved. And I felt like it was a lot more interactive in a, in a way out. You would have to make a decision about how you were going to approach this level. You know, are we going to knock out this cop, steal his car and drive across the bridge like Leo wants? Or are we going to do Vincent's where you're going to, sneakily go underneath the bridge and and try to stealth your way across it takes two does not have anything like that it's it almost feels a little bit like you and i working together to solve a sudoku puzzle yeah a a little bit of it is kind of like that and it's like the easy sudoku where it's just (laughs) three columns (laughs) it's like yeah three three columns and 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 six out of the nine numbers are already there yes so yeah yeah but for me i think a way out is better so we have a way out ranked number 23 out of 40 so we're gonna go below that 
where where do you want to put this in? I mean, we're looking at games like GTFO, Cuphead, Escape from Tarkov, Valorant. Those are some of the ones within the next it, 10. I would put it somewhere between A Way Out at 23 and Cuphead at 27. Cuphead's a great game, but the multiplayer part of Cuphead, if you're not on the couch with somebody, is kind of tough. And even then, it's there's just so much going on that yeah. I'd probably rather play It Takes Two over that from a multiplayer aspect so i'd say somewhere right in that range um 23 to put, 26 ish somewhere i think you're spot on i would put it below a way out and Rimworld, but i would put it above gtfo and phasmophobia now gtfo just came out with a huge update another rundown we might have to hop back into that game at some point um mm-hmm. but maybe we can adjust that on our leaderboard but yeah let's put it Oh man, see, I'm not a huge fan of RimWorld either from a multiplayer aspect. So <laughs> you take I'd, that back. Honestly, sir. <laughs> I'd be okay putting it literally just one under a way out. Um, but yeah, we could put it under G- or just one over GTFO as well. I'm I'm fine with either, to be honest. All right, you're bigger on GTFO than me. Do you want it above or below that? Because if if I want it below RimWorld, but you want it below GTFO, let's just drop it below both. Okay. Yeah, that works. You want to do that? Yeah. All so right. that'll put it at 26. 26 out of 40, which doesn't sound great, but we do generally like the games that we cover. But we're going to put it below GTFO, but above Phasmophobia, Cuphead, Payday 2, and Fall Guys. Perfect. I think that's right, honestly, where it fits. It's an entertaining game, but it's not, for me, it's not a game I'll ever have any desire to play again. (laughs) I, I could definitely see us playing A Way Out in a few years. I don't see us playing it takes two right yeah yep all right well i think that's all that we have here for this episode on it takes two it was a pretty wild ride i do know that there are a couple of moments that will definitely stand out that i will remember it's a very memorable game if you're looking for a co-op experience this would be the only game to buy right now that's new so this is kind of the hotness right now i think it's actually the top seller on steam and it is $40, which is also higher than A Way Out. A Way Out was only a $30 game. This game was much more ambitious, but it does cost a little bit more at 40 But it is a little bit longer than A Way Out as well. Um, but that's all that we have here for this episode. Make sure to come check us out on Discord. So go ahead and click the link in the podcast description. Come join our Discord for free. And then if you want to help support the show, visit MultiplayerSquad.com, where you can pledge starting at $5 a month, which helps support the show so that way we can keep delivering two episodes every week. And then you can also hit us up on social media at Multiplayer Pod. And then we will be back with our next episode on Thursday to talk about This Week in Gaming. Yeah, come come check out the Discord server, guys. I, it's free. It's an amazing community. We'd love to have you guys join that community. You can, hey, you can lurk if you want. If it's not your style to chat a whole lot, but you just want to, you know, see other, you know, hang out with other people that listen to the show. I, I mean, like I said, come check it out. You're more than welcome to just lurk and and you know not participate a whole lot. But we just love to grow the community, and that's that's definitely one of the best ways to do it. Yep, so we'll see you guys on Discord, and we'll have our next episode on Thursday. We'll see you guys then. See you, everybody. Later, skater. <laughs> well, got to go. My little record button had, like, an arrow where it started, which I don't remember seeing, but it started at 1, so I'm assuming it's okay. And it's, I see it recording All my right. voice. <laughs> it should be fine. Yeah. Oh. Don't worry, we'll find out. We'll just re-record the whole thing the if we have to. The cat just broke into my room. Get out. I saw get that. Out you stupid cat, get out of here. Get. All right, that'll go into the uh, post. <laughs> Me going, my stupid cat, get out of here. <laughs>